Hey everybody, it's Jake Mace and I'm here with my man Seamus O'Leary with Seamus O'Leary's Tropical Fruit Trees. Good morning. What tree is this right here? We're uh, standing next to a... Uh... This is a Barbados cherry, otherwise known as Acerola. Mm -hmm. uh, this particular variety is called Florida Sweet. It's a sweet tasting cherry if you allow them to ripen on the tree. Popular for that reason. And this yeah. one's loaded with flowers and fruits. Definitely. Yeah, this one we've had probably about 8 to 10 fruit a day maturing off it now that we're heating up. Exactly. I've eaten at least 100 cherries this season alone yeah. off this one tree. And we need to feed this guy. When I'm feeding the tree, I water this guy with pond water. I give him the foliar feed, which I spray on the leaves. Right. But what do I have in these two bags and what are we going to put on this guy today? What you have here are two different types of fertilizers. The first one is an 1868 NutriCoat slow release food. And this you apply generally about twice a year, spring and fall. Um, this here is a monthly food. This is an 839. What these are, this is kind of like the carb, the junk food. When okay. you feed the tree, the first couple of weeks after it gets the food, you're going to have a spike in nutrients, and then as it wears off, it's going to come back down. It's kind of like mm. a, a sugar spike. Whereas this here is a slow release, so this kind of evens out the peaks and valleys mm. of this. So between the two of them, the tree is always getting some type of food. So this one here, the 839, is a monthly food. Correct. And this one, the 1868, is a twice a year food. 180 twice a year. Food. Yes. And the other question I had for you was, how do you apply it, and how much do you give the tree of this size? This tree has been in the ground a little over a year, hmm. so this one is mature. Okay. The roots are established. It's ready to be fed on a, on a regular dose. Uh, the rule is normally one tablespoon per foot of height of trunk. Of trunk. Trunk here. I really I don't count this as trunk. Okay. I'll count, you know, eyeballing it, maybe we're at about three footish. Hmm. So a tree this size, I'm going to give three to four tablespoons of food hmm. around the base, around the drip line, okay. never right at the trunk. So if this tree had been in the ground, let's say two months, hmm. maybe I would just throw a spoonful, just, just so one. there's a little something there. But when the roots are young, they're fine. You don't want to overwhelm them right. with fertilizer. So once the tree is established, you can go to full dose. So how do we do it? Since you don't have a spoon, I'm going to use my fingers. You want to show the camera how much you got in there? I'm guessing that's probably about a spoonful. That's one spoonful. So three sake. of those. Yeah, three, three, three to four three of these. Size. Now you have a lot of mulch here. Yes. So I'm going to go ahead and use four tablespoons. To make sure it permeates through the mulch. Correct. Because I foresee a lot of this washing away before it ever gets to the tree itself. So. Now do dogs like to eat this stuff? I do not know. <laughs> okay. I have not conversed with the dogs in that. So watch your dogs around this stuff. And then can we put this on at the same time? Same time. And you could say three or four of these two. Because of your amount of mulch, I would probably go ahead and do four tablespoons. Okay. And then do I just uh, overhead water it in or just wait for the rains to do it? I water it in on, with my regular water cycle. Okay. What the foods are gonna do are promote root growth promote foliage growth, mm. promote fruiting and flowering, flowering and fruiting. And you're gonna get the nice dark green leaves that you do here, which also comes from your pond water. Yes. So the foods are gonna supplement the tree. It's gonna give it a little bit more energy, a little bit more nutrition going into the hot summer months, which when it's gonna need it. Mm. So that's when which the tree's is, gonna get stressed. Which is right now, which, which is why is we're doing week. it. Yes. Yeah. So we're here in the back part of my yard. We're gonna feed the star fruit tree, the carambola. Yes. And we're going to feed uh, a mango tree as well. So the same rules apply. One tablespoon per foot of growth. Correct. And on this particular tree, I'd probably do about four tablespoons again. About four. Yeah. So that's about a tablespoon. So four of these. That looks right. More or less. Oh god, I lost count. <laughs> there you go. Got it. And next I'm going to show you guys how I apply the azomite after the tree is already planted in ground. Of course, when we planted these trees, initially, you and I planted these trees, we put azomite in the soil. Right. But now it's been a few months and we're going to apply a seasonal azomite on top of the soil. Yes. And I'm generally figuring about four to five times a year, the azomite would be good. That sounds good. I might take about that much, a jar like that. You guys can see. And 
I just water it in because it's just minerals, 70 different minerals, including trace elements, which is why it's called azomite. It's the A to Z of minerals, including trace elements. And I just take it like this and I spread it around the root zone. From what I understand, you can't use too much of it. It's Correct. not gonna burn, it's a mineral. So don't stress about portion. So go crazy. Go crazy. And that's it, a little halo of goodness around the tree. That looks good. And then I water it in, definitely. What is this azomite gonna do for the tree? It's gonna provide a lot of the, the minerals that were lacking here, uh, either because they weren't here to begin with in our area, or because of the high pH, mm. the roots are locking out a lot of the different things. So this kind of helps uh, as your pH is coming down because of your heavy mulching, there's gonna be a lot of food available to the tree once it adjusts and acclimates. Which as I understand it will produce more healthy, mineral rich fruit for you to eat. Yes. Because modern day agricultural practices have leached the minerals from the ground. Correct, it's the same premise why we take a vitamin in the morning, a mm. multivitamin. There's a lot of minerals that are not available in our daily foods that we get. If you take the multivitamin, you're getting a little bit of everything. So it's a multivitamin for the tree? Definitely. Well, let's put it on our monster mango. Yes. So we're standing next to this carry mango tree mm -hmm. that is flowering. So the mangoes look like when they flower. But he's also got some pretty nice mature established fruit on here. There's probably about 20 of these nice mature mangoes. Yeah, and these will be ready in probably another four to six weeks-ish. Okay. Uh, the carry, you want to watch the fruit because when they are ripe, they will drop to the ground Oh. and they bruise very easily. So you want to check them daily and as soon as they start to soften up a bit, take them off the tree. So ideally, if you can catch one before it's the ground, it's the most ripe fruit possible. And if you happen to be filming at the same time, that would be a double whammy. Nice. So we're going to apply the azomite and the, uh, the food Correct. to the mango tree. Yep. Let's do it. How many uh, tablespoons did you put on this guy? This I'm going to give about five. Five. Now the rule with mangoes is that you do not want to fertilize when the fruit is just appearing. When they're, when they're flowering and the fruit are at this stage okay. and setting. And why is that? Because if you fertilize it promotes foliage growth and sometimes hmm. the tree will forget to fruit and it'll push out new leaves and, and drop the fruit. So when they're, when they're flowering and just starting to set fruit, kind of leave it alone. Okay. The azomite is good, but as far as fertilizers, leave it alone for a couple months there. Until the fruit has become more mature. Until you know the fruit's gonna hold and they've set, then you go ahead and resume your feeding. Okay, and I'm gonna add two jars of azomite to a tree this size. One thing that I love to do is kind of time the feeding or the azomite application right before it rains. Yes. And that way, if you can get it the day before it rains, the rain will do the work for you and Correct. dissolve that stuff. Or right before you water as well. I'll do my, all my feeding when I know I'm getting ready to water and wash it all in. Nice. So I practice martial arts and we have certain weapons and tools to train. These are the weapons and the tools of the successful gardener, especially in the tree department. Correct. Foliar feed, in-ground food, potted food. We have the calcium inhibiting water filter. We have the azomite. And you guys can get all these Seamus O'Leary products at jakemace.com. <laughs>